In a psychological sense, the whole siege of Tobruk started on a wrong note for us. We had withdrawn, retreated really, and the Germans flushed with victory must have felt it was all over by the shouting. Jeffrey Fernside fought with the 7th Australian Division in Africa and held out for nearly a year during the siege of Tobruk. Today, an advertising account executive, he lives in Sydney, Australia. In 1941, Carl Bolst was with the Africa Corps fighting in the desert expanses of North Africa. A native of Hamelin, Germany, the home of the legendary Pied Piper, he resides today in Southern California and works as a masseur. What I can never forget about Africa is that the desert turned out to be a bigger enemy than the Allies. The heat and the thirst we suffered drove some of my comrades out of their minds. Jeffrey Fernside and Carl Bolst came from far ends of the globe to face each other along. In an age of great change came a collection of shows that recorded the events of our time as they happened. These are the classic documentaries that informed a world in transition. These are history classics. World War II. History's greatest conflict seen through the eyes of the soldiers who fought the battles. Hear their dramatic stories and witness the epic clash between Axis and Allies, victory and defeat from both sides of the battle line. In the winter of 1940, a British storm breaks over Italian North Africa. For the first time in World War II, Allied troops take the initiative, smashing against the Italian front in northern Libya. The British advance is so swift that one Australian division alone captures over half the Italian Libyan army. The whole Italian position in Africa is near a state of collapse. Before Mussolini can send out an SOS to his fellow dictator, the German high command has analyzed the situation. Hitler creates the German Africa Corps an elite arm of mechanized infantry, artillery, and armor. To lead this special unit, Hitler appoints a brilliant panzer commander, Erwin Rommel. Neither he nor his troops have experience in desert warfare. As soon as panzer troops come ashore, Rommel sends formation straight to the front to probe British forward lines. The Africa Corps must learn as they go. In one of the artillery batteries is a veteran of earlier German victories in Europe, Private Karl Bolst. There are many Italian troops here who have been fighting over a year now. We have been told they are poorly left, that it is up to us to get them out of the trouble they are in. We are confident we will be able to show them how to be victorious. April 3rd, driving over 500 miles, Rommel advances into Benghazi with a lightning thrust. He startles not only Rome and Berlin, but also the British. Within 10 days, the Germans have made a knifing advance across northern Libya, from the outskirts of Tripoli to the borders of Egypt. They can go no further without a supply line from the sea. Tobruk is that supply line, the only deep harbor between Benghazi and Alexandria. With the Allied troops falling back on Tobruk as an Australian infantry sergeant, Geoffrey Fernside. It's been six days of touch and go, constantly strafed by aircraft, keeping one jump ahead of the German tanks ranging our flanks, in an effort to cut off our retreat back to the fixed defenses at Tobruk. We had one humorous incident before reaching Tobruk. In a dust storm, the lead truck went off on a tangent and commenced to circle around in the desert. When the mistake became apparent, one of our diggers yelled, a fine heart of your bloody will do. Play a ring of roses in the desert with Jerry on our tail. As we go through the perimeter of defenses, I feel strangely troubled. The Germans, no doubt, will surround the fortress and attack till it falls. 
The enemy shoots a lot of propaganda at us. Lord Haw Haw, the British traitor, directs his broadcast smack at the Australians. The rats of Tobruk, he calls us, and that quite soon we'll be exterminated. Well, we'll have something to say about that. There's a death-like silence out on the desert. The Garden of Allah, the Arabs call it. But it's a garden Allah seldom waters. A place where forever the restless heat is like a shimmering veil before your eyes. You watch the blood-red sunset and wonder, will I ever see the sunset upon another day? The drive toward Tobruk is over the same desert terrain we have been traveling since leaving Tripoli. But suddenly we come upon destroyed German equipment and German dead who no one has found time to bury. We snap back to life when our officers give orders to set up our guns. We were setting up when suddenly there he was, General Rommel. He spoke with our officers, then passed among us. He did not hide his pleasure at seeing our many guns, and I heard him say, we will do it. With this heavy artillery, we will do it. It's just what we needed. Good Friday, April 11th. Tobruk is isolated. Desert rats wait silently, dug in their holes in underground bunkers, allowing German tanks to come on through the outer perimeter. German infantry follows, thinking their tanks have cleared the way. This is just what the British want, 